Hi everyone. Hello. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming out on um, what was a, a bit of a gloomy night out there. Although it is actually quite lovely. It's. I was speaking to my mother on the phone earlier, and she's on the other side of the bay, and it was raining, raining, and I said, "Well, we haven't had much rain here at all." But, um, but still, it feels like something's going on in, in the weather. Um, those of you who are used to coming into this room will be struck by the different configuration. Um, we, we are sitting on um, on the set for, I said this to the bird, um, a, a wonderful performance that I hope you'll come back and join us for in a couple of weeks' time. Um, there are quite a few people here tonight who I haven't met before. My name is Melinda Hickson. I'm the director of the Institute of Postcolonial Studies. Um, and I'm here with Carlos Moreo, our wonderful executive officer, um, the man who does everything um, up, the end, up the back of the room today. And I acknowledge that we gather here tonight, as always, on unceded Aboriginal land, on the country of the Wurundjeri people. We honour the owners and the custodians of this country, the keepers of knowledge and stories and songs, and it's particularly poignant that we do this on this National Sorry Day today. Um, it's also particularly poignant that we pay tribute to Indigenous sovereignty and the power of place in the context of this discussion tonight, where we have a panel emerging from a project that IPCS is extremely proud to support one of our first projects of coexistence, as we call them, a project we call Finding Place After Dislocation. So the significance of acknowledging country and what country gives to us all is very much felt in this company tonight. So as I've suggested, in two weeks' time, we will come together for the first performance of I Said This to the Bird. And tonight is an opportunity to hear from the creators, the director, the writers and the performers of this remarkable work, which has been some two and a half, three years in the making now, with a very long, long COVID interruption through the middle of it. Um, so a really unusual and remarkable feat for us to hear about. Um, this project has been supported by many people in the IPCS community. I want to particularly acknowledge Mr. Stephen Ho, sitting quietly down the back mm -hmm. of the room there, um, for his wonderful enthusiasm and very generous support for this project. It means a lot to all of us. We're really very grateful. So let me introduce our panel and then we can get underway. You don't want to hear from me, you want to hear from them. First of all, Mamare Dani, who I'm guessing will be known to most of you in the room, is a playwright and theatre director. He has a PhD in hermeneutics, phenomenological and existential psychology, as well as a master's degree in sociolinguistics. Mamad has worked extensively with Middle Eastern communities and especially with Iranian men who've experienced violence and torture, and who have had to deal with forms of social and cultural alienation on both <coughs> sides of displacement. That's a really important element of this project. Mamad has written and directed several theatre works, quite a number, and is the author of two books. The most recent is Narrative and Violence, ways of suffering amongst Iranian men in diaspora. To my left, we have Mari Golamishi, I knew I was going to do that, Golami Shahidani. Mari was born in Tehran. He gained his Bachelor of Information Technology from the Melbourne Polytechnic. Mahadi's family has always had a keen interest in Iranian arts 
He produces a regular film review podcast, which I think we need to know more about. I'd certainly like to know more about that. And this is Marty's first theatrical experience. Reza Kabiani, over there on the other corner of the room, was born in Iran and migrated to Australia in 2013. He works in the industrial sector with an engineering background, but has a very strong interest in theatre and acting. In 2013, Reza joined the Baran Theatre Group in Brisbane. And in recent years, he's participated in several short films and plays. Ramin Montazeri, here on my right, has been involved in theatre since he was 17 years old. In his city of birth, Abadan, in Iran, Ramin worked in television and radio. He came to Australia as an asylum seeker in 2013. He's currently part of Radio 3 Triple Z Persian program team. And he's participated in the Melbourne Theatre Playback, performed with choral groups. I can tell you from first-hand experience, he's a fantastic singer. And he's recently established Four Panjera, a Persian radio station. Raman is currently working on his first creative writing project in Persian. There's a lot of writing for us to talk about tonight. And finally, Murfam Naimi is a Baha'i Iranian refugee. Murfam left Iran when he was 16 years old and spent three years in Turkey waiting to gain refugee status in order to come to Australia. During his time in Turkey, Murfam turned to literature and writing and in 2021, he published his first novel, Kariza. Congratulations on that. So a very warm welcome to you all. We're going to start by passing the microphone to Mamet. And then we're going to hear a little bit from everyone, um, which is going to take us on this journey through this project and its unfolding. And then we'll have plenty of time for more discussion. So please make everybody welcome. Thank you. Um, right, thanks uh, for coming out to listen to us. As Linda was talking, I thought I made it, maybe I'll make it more conversational. But usually when I get into that conversation, I'll keep going. <laughs> That's why I put a bit of text to read, <laughs> to read through. So please bear with me for 10 or 15 minutes because I thought I'd better give you some <coughs> deep insights about what's been going on in this, uh, in this uh, project. Firstly, uh, I acknowledge that the land on which I live and work is Wurundjeri country. And I recognize that the sovereignty of this land has never been ceded. I pay my respect to elders, past, present, and emerging, the culture, and the unbroken and ongoing connection to land and community. I'd like to thank Melinda, Carlos, um, and the Institute's board for all your care and the support, and you have provided me to work on this play over the last two extremely critical or difficult years. I'm thankful for your kindness and generosity. I want to extend my thank to these guys, and I'm going to call these guys other boys or guys, so just a sense of affinity because in the Persian I call them like that. To these guys and whoever joined me to contribute to this final stage of this world. Without them, this would not have happened. And I'd like also to extend my thank to Stephen, who really been a great uh, supporter of this project. And I'm delighted that we had chance, or I had chance to meet him twice. Let me begin with this uh, observation. Melinda came to see the guys performance on Sunday. And from her reflections and comments, it appeared that she liked what she saw unfolding in front of her eyes. The play was performed in Persian. It was very physical. The boys and I greatly appreciated her feedback, 
suggestions and responses. When I began writing up the following notes to share my experience of this panel about doing this play and working with these guys, I started with this line. What do I do in exile is to keep nurturing hope. A piece of uh, Hannah Arant, you might be familiar with, Hannah Arant says that fear annihilates all happiness. A piece of artwork speaks of the event of an entity, the event of the otherness. For example, the face that dominates and dictates, the face that is traumatized, tortured, exiled, forgotten, neglected, ignored, and marginalized. Art being created is never created out of nothing. Creating is not easy. Every creativity relates back to something. In one of the earlier conversations I had with, with the boys, I said, I believe I know nothing through ideas, or for that matter, concepts, unless I have deeply learned where they come from, their genesis, roots, history, and beginnings. I initially invited 10 individuals to discuss if they would like to participate in the idea I had in mind to work on this project during the lockdowns. However, we ended up with four who agreed to write about their experiences of isolation during that time. I am grateful to Reza, Mehfam, Farhad, who is not here with us, and Asta for writing their short monologues during the lockdowns. My invitations to them was if they could write a short piece about their individual experiences of isolation during this time. Initially, I wanted them to perform the pieces they wrote, but we realized that it would not work for a while, for various reasons. So I suggested I go away and write a play. I don't know why I made that decision. I don't really know. After, this chosen, after the chosen segments from their writings, I wrote the play by integrating those selected pieces by them into the body of the play. Then I invited each of them to consider performing in the play and advised them that I would invite others to act or perform in the final draft of the text if they were unable or could not further participate. So after writing these monologues and undergoing several readings and rehearsals in the early stages, two of participants Asad and Farah decided not to take a more extensive part in preparing the play for its final stage. Of the initial four, Reza and Mehfam chose to remain. I invited Ramin, who initially wanted to join us but could not participate in earlier stages due to other present pressing commitments that he had. Ramin also assisted me in meeting with Mahdi, who was very enthusiastic about joining us in the later stage. It's good to give this kind of background so you get where the picture is. Yeah, it gives you the... Um, from my earliest conversations with each participant, the focus was on reflecting on the critical issues of alienation, isolation, and coping during the lockdowns. I started to think about this play while working with the Victorian Foundation for Survivors of Torture as a psycho-cultural advisor on a familiar idea with a large group that produced, I think, excellent outcomes for all involved. In different context, it wasn't play. The play is about process of self-realization, if you like, or better funding self. This is what we've been discussing amongst ourselves, and all in Persian. 
if it deals with dis disengagement, the struggle for engagement, friendship, loneliness, limits of language, thinking and feeling in our own language, the alienating factor of another language, inner monologue with the self, the desire for belonging, eagerness to be understood, sadness, rejection, resoluteness, uh, coping, and being judged and judging. There are all the notes that I took up, but this was I'm putting in this <laughs> paragraph. But each of them created so much wonderful conversation to really understand what we were talking about. How one, for example, how one grapples with stigmatization, especially this one. How one uh, grapples with stigmatization in this society and how she or he experiences stigmatization and exclusion amongst their own cultures. Their own people, our own people. You see the play, you come and see it. It's amazing the way that they um, uh, demonstrate that. It is about the perception of how one thinks and is, loss and gain, the courage to speak one's mind, love for somebody so far away, loved ones who are again so far away, and finding and sharing emotions trapped inside ourselves. One of the factors that I've been working with these people is, well, not with these guys, is let's get to those emotions we've been trapped for all decades and years. It's been fantastic, and I've been so honored to observe that. Uh, from our first encounters, I encourage that to open up and talk about the thoughts and express their emotions without fearing or being judged. We focus on finding out the deep meaning of isolation and its impact on us. This commitment helped us uh, towards uh, uh, meaningful connections and, of course, enriched the friendship that emerged uh, through the dialogues that I've been observing amongst, amongst each of them, and of course with me too. Even though at times things were very challenging, observing step by step and working with all individuals involved in, the, in, in reaching this point has been an incredibly enriching and powerful experience for me. Can I hear from them? The impact. Say a few words about the impact. Through, through their engagements with the play, I frequently heard from them that they learned that the potential for care, empathy, respect, receptivity, friendship, and trust is possible. They experience feelings that have lain. I'll never forget about this this long. Um, they experience feeling that have lain dormant in them for years or decades, or relate to one another, which they did not feel from the start, indicating that they felt nervous, suspicious. Iranians are like that, unfortunately. And one of our major uh, problems is that we never hear an Iranian say, oh, I trust other Iranian, unfortunately, and we can we discussed that very thoroughly in the world agree. And sometimes even distrustful, which, which forced them to hold back what they wanted to say. This process helped them open up, not only to others, but also to themselves. Hence, experiencing the comfort of belonging and togetherness among themselves. The meaningful and constructive impact of working together was that was that they realized that there is something called my inner world. Jahane Durunian man. Not as a mystic nonsense, but something that lives. Each of them have an inner world now. Not from ourselves, from what they live in the body. I'm not going to talk about that in a, in a second more. As a powerful reference point, a reminder of one's potential for, for self-realization, friendship, empathy, genuineness, and positive regard. Always important to me. The idea of bringing to life in a safe, trusting, and caring situation something in the other has always been important to me. 
This one was not the exception. I tried to help each of them freely discover their dispositions. And experience their own reality to display as they see and feel it. I often, up to this point, reminded them that we are in the process of unfolding, writing a play, writing a piece of art, or good conversation, authentic conversation is always about unfolding. Unfolding what needs to be <coughs> found and, 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 and concealed, expressed, interpreted, and understood, both individually and in the group. The process was about telling and uncovering the potential in the individual. I scrapped many of these things to say a few things and stop because I really want to engage you guys in conversation. Uh, when I think, because I talk to them a lot, particularly when they met the text, and those of you who work with me or have seen my plays, uh, there's a lot of problem to, to get to them. Uh, including for myself, but maybe I have to clarify here as far as they're concerned. When I think, speak, and write, and direct, I pay great attention to what the absences of. Absences of. Does to us. Especially those who have experienced it. I want to understand these absences in my life and others too. I'm always watching and listening deeply when I see and hear the lack of. The lack of. We always are in it. We might not utter it, but we're always in it. I perpetually think of when they present the moments themselves in my encounter with others in the world. I am driven by living and witnessing the lack, absences. I have lived and seen suffering and destruction firsthand. All my works are about the absences. I have experienced and witnessed. That's why I love theater. That's why I love hermeneutics. That's why I like to interpret the most complex texts. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for coming to listening to us. And I was hoping it would be more conversation or like two day conversation. Hoping you get there soon. Uh, since I knew that like, coming here and we have to talk, uh, I was just thinking how I start and how should I just go through the journey that I had. We had through this project. Uh, but now that Mehmet was talking and maybe before that we start, I got an original text with me, I was just checking something. And I would start with part of the text that original of my text uh, that is not in the play. And I would try to translate it. Good. Starting from here to just showing how, even maybe I myself forgot that time, and I think any of us has forgotten the time when the curfew was there, when there was a time that all the shops was closed, all the shops were closed, and well, because of my job, I needed to work. I was one of the essentials to work, so and I got videos of five minute driving without the car passing. In one way or another way. Just maybe to me a very my translation. He became alone. Maybe he chose the loneliness or loneliness for chosen. Maybe loneliness and him through a pre-arrangement or because of some common understanding selected each other. Anyway, the outcome was set. His phone was not ringing. And he was not any, he didn't have any tendency to call anybody. 
No one is coming. No one is going. Nothing was happening. Weekend was the worst time. Karen was tied to the bed, sleeping. He was sleeping a lot. And I can recall the time I was going home, it was uh, one of those gray, foggy days, typical Melbourne that he was talking to Mama. And he was just sharing his idea with me. The driver experience, what are you feeling now and what we have gone through during this time? And that was just maybe something to me. Everyone's life was up and down situation, but sometimes all the bad things converge together. Uh, and maybe that was a help for me to start writing about your current situation and what you're feeling. Just to helping yourself, forget about Mamad, Mamad's idea, project, theater, everything. Just to start writing. And I can remember I was struggling to write. And now I was keep following every week, every second week. How you write? How are your text is going? Are you still writing? No. Yes. And through the project, he's persistent actually in a good way. Commitment to the project. In a colorful word, if I can say. Uh, bring the project here. So I think not only me, the other guys, may form a staff and all the other guys that maybe prepare the text or put something down on paper. And we started writing, I myself started writing from very, very personal points. And I was trying to not scare of anything. Just write as much as Whatever you feel, just put it down. The original text can mine actually some stages become very sexual, sometimes very dark. There was always thinking of a monologue in my mind that I'm just doing it alone on a stage, a dark, a black room that I'm playing in it, with some green of light around it. Um, but I put it down. Uh, <coughs> I'm writing in my mobile because I can, when I'm in bed, I can write. Uh, when I'm at work, I can I have it everywhere, so I can just keep taking notes. The last update of my note is November 2021. When the la last version was sent to I didn't check, but the last of the history 2020, November 2020. First time that we met together was last April 2021, that all the guys that at that time were supposed to be in the project we met, I think all of us for the first time, we started talking. project started with writing in loneliness and talking and we did a couple of drawings of maybe monologues, different things, and the different words that are not helping, not coming to my mind now. But we tried, but nothing worked. None of them worked. Um, then Mama put his writing hat on and said, okay, I'll put them together to make one text and see how, if you are angry, to mix them. Just select the pieces that you like to be in the play, or the main parts that you were really concerned, or you really keen to be in the final text. And he started writing in his own world. The first time that I read the text, there was no sound after. I wasn't feeling it, other than the section that was only mine. Covid situation, Curfews, up and downs, Zoom rehearsals, reading, reading, and 
gradually, gradually, talking about maybe, as I said, more than a year of working on the text. Gradually it started, text started to speak in. And then, I was scared of man actually, that what is happening in his world and what he hearing, yeah, <laughs> that he's ended up in the final text. But I have to say, we uh, thank Mama, as I said before, and also Roman. Now, since Roman joined the project, the energy that he brought in actually elevated everything. The way that he approached the text, approached the group, the way that he working with us. Honestly, I have to say, I said it behind you, I'm just saying in front of you, that it really helped the project to go forward. And helping the text actually to speak out more and more every rehearsal better than the previous ones. And <coughs> we were very lucky to have made it in our last, last rehearsal, Sunday. I think if you join us next two weeks, even if it is in different language, maybe you don't understand, you can't understand all the details, but I think you will feel what we, what we have felt during this period of COVID with the background of immigration of refugees. And hopefully you enjoy and we have a Hello. Hello, everyone. <coughs> Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I am so proud and profoundly honored to be a participant and a performer in this play. Firstly, I would love to appreciate the efforts of a man who's been generously helping me a lot. I want to thank Mr. Eidani for his actions and hard work on this project. And then I'll explain the project and what I have gone through so far. The experience of being isolated has its undeniable ominous impact on me and the people around me. It also has led me to experience an unprecedented sense of loneliness and hopelessness. Being alone in lockdown caused me to lose any hopefulness for the future. I felt like it is impossible to get along with the past as a refugee in quarantine. There was nothing to encourage me to move on. I was barely able to write things down and I thought I'd never be able to write anything down again. Now, I may understand that losing the ability to write was the worst impact of being isolated on me. I was profoundly disappointed and tried to find things to write down. However, I wrote lines, but they seemed to be a bunch of useless words. I felt like those written lines could never reflect the sense of my loneliness. I remember when Mr. Eidani asked me to write about what I experienced in lockdown. When he asked me to do so, I already had some written lines, so I gave them to him. Then he decided to write a play, so he did, until I realized that I was supposed to perform what I had written down before. I was so frightened. I felt like I, I lost the emotional connection between myself and my written lines. I thought I'd never be sufficiently qualified to perform in a theater, but Mr. Aidan proved how determined he is to encourage me. He helped me a lot to believe in myself. Sometimes I feel like he is the only person in my life to whom I owe the most. He was also a sufficient reason for me to keep going through all of the difficulties in this project. When he said that he wanted me to perform in a theater, I wished someone else wanted me to do this so I could easily reject the request. I thought he was the only one who I'd never disappoint. This project is going to be my first uh, experience in theater. It has 
It's been like a rich emotional and spiritual journey so far. The experience has also helped me find some good friends, which is the best result of engaging with others in this project. Ever since I left my homeland at the age of 16, I've had no friends. I lived in Turkey for three years without having a friend to talk to about how I felt, what I experienced, or how it felt like to abandon my homeland. At that age, I turned to literature and writing. I desperately needed someone or something to help me to talk. I was overwhelmingly required to think that there are meanings in living my homeland. I remember when I felt like I could never keep moving on anymore. When I was in Turkey, I began to write a novel. First, I thought I'd name the title The Man Who Lost His Homeland. Then I found the name of the infamous place of Kadrizek. I thought Kadrizek would be a better choice reflecting Iranians' suffering and pain. When I came to Australia and met Mr. Eldani, he, he helped me overcome the reluctance to publish my book. In 2021, I published my first novel. When I published my first book, my mom said to me, Oh, my dear son, you changed a lot. And I replied, No, mom, a lot has changed me. I remember once I told her that I'm always in too much pain. That's why I'm writing. I wanted her to know that her son has such a painful ability to feel everything. He feels everything and doesn't know where this could take him. I wanted her to see that she was the most caring and supportive woman I have ever seen in my life. I am wholeheartedly trying to do my best in this project. Participating in this project has led me to turn my loneliness into a rich psychophysical form of art. Thank you. situation we've been in, in the hard time no one can say ah it wasn't that bad it was your smiles can prove that and um, i tried to contact my friends i'll just go straight away straight to go to the story i tried to contact my friends after maybe first week or second week i tried to contact my friends like, hey how are you he said, oh, what's wrong i said there's nothing wrong i just called to say hello and how are you doing and this and that? I said, uh, oh yeah, we're doing good. Uh, this COVID is killing us and this and da 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 da. I said, okay, thank you. And third week, and fourth week, no one called me back. So what's wrong with them? And I find out, and found out, sorry, if I'm using the wrong word, just try to understand me. And I find out the friend that I was thinking all the time, they're my uh, warm blood. Friends and close friends, they're not dead. Because when they've been at work, okay, it was a good excuse. We've been busy, oh, I'm tired, like this and that. But now what? Are you at home? You don't even grab your phone and just say, hey, are you alive? Hello? And I cut a couple of the friends. I said, okay, now I have a better vision about what happening around me and who is around me who i trust who i try to make a memory with them i'm staying always with my migrant and coming by boat on the ocean between the sharks and everything to the australia i stopped making any memory any strong friendship the French is there. Yeah. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Ah, how are you been today? Oh, it was good. It was good. That's it. This is a friendship. It doesn't go deep. It's always on the surface. It doesn't go deep. I'm telling you. Or maybe with the people from your culture, 
you can find something in common and you can build a friendship you know better you know more deeper than the others so this is the friends section I start to make a video call okay because I'm separate from my family I haven't seen my mother like since 10 years 9 years no one of my family these people are my family you're my family but not great family and I tried to call my family and talk to them and the situation over there was worse and you know this war disaster was going all around the world and you know all the people was uh, uh, wrestling with this problems the COVID and that was good in somehow because I was seeing my mother in 4K resolution. That was very, very good quality on my phone. She was so beautiful. She was asking me, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. She said, when you're not shaving, don't call me. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, so you, I see you white hair or white beard. And that time I find out I'm getting older and older and time's going quickly. I didn't understand it. After that I start noticing in my face, actually the COVID was good. It's the second time I'm saying the COVID was good. Because the COVID gave me someone to talk to in the mirror, in my, ba in my bed, uh, bathroom. I got a friend who was living in Turkey for six years as you been there. Same, same problem, same, um, same uh, history, background history. And he said, you know what, I was, I was talking with myself sometimes in, in the factory that I was working. I said, are you really crazy? And that time in the mirror, I remember my friend. I said, hey, I'm talking to someone. Who is look like me? We are agreed on everything, even we using the same word. The only problem was he was doing something opposite. I was raising my left hand, he was raising his right hand. I found someone to talk to. Maybe you say, I will say something now, but it's real. I was talking to him on the way to come here. I was checking everything that I wanted to tell you. It's funny, but the good thing is I'm aware about that. I understand there is someone I'm talking to, but some people they don't understand. They get in trouble, and the trouble, the trouble get worse and worse and worse and worse, and no one cares about them as a friend, as a family, because there's no one around them. Anyway, long story short, after that I start to I said okay, I talked to dear. Mama, professor, I said, I have an idea about the writing, writing a book about myself. I thought I'm someone special in the world and I'm going to talk, uh, talk about it. I said, okay. He asked me a small, I mean, short question. Are you brave enough for that? And I was, and he was tasting his coffee like this and twist his head. Are you brave enough? I said, I was kept quiet. I'm always saying that people are human keeping quiet in two stage one doesn't have anything to say the second maybe he has a lot of things to say but he doesn't know where to start and i kept quiet after a short silence i said yes i can do it and i back home i started writing my book two years ago two or three years ago. two years ago yeah and in some situation, I, am just, I felt that question. I understand why he asked me this question. Because the pen was, was in my hand. I was behind my laptop. I was going to write something. So, oh, that's not, that not good. And his voice comes to my mind. said, so, are you brave enough for that? I say, yeah, I, I am. I put a couple of lines with shame. A couple of lines with uh, fear, even because I'm sending that to my mom, and she straight back, uh, he called call me straight away and said, 
don't put it on, don't, don't publish this one. I said, why? Right. She said, uh, you're going to get in trouble. We're going to get in trouble in our country. There is something that maybe you people cannot feel it because this is something in the background of the, in the other countries, other land that he left, that I left, that he left, that he left. Why we should be here? Thank you. Um, okay, this is a section about my feeling, my situation, my uh, position in uh, that world disaster time where the you know isolation was on. On 19 of 7 of 2020, Mama, Mama uh, called me and said, Oh, we're going to do the performance about this and you know, we're going to write about the COVID things. Are you okay to write something for us? I said, yeah, why not? And after that, and one day after, I sent him uh, three pages about what I was feeling, what I said to him. And yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't join the group, I couldn't be part of the, uh, this performance that's gonna happen in the next two weeks. And uh, because of my job, or my feeling, or whatever. And I'm so happy that I can be on the stage from the beautiful people and uh, perform this beautiful script that Mama wrote for us. And yeah, that's it. You talk to Mushu. Thank you for joining us. So, hi everyone. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, I promise I don't make it too long. I just want to talk a little bit about friendship. First of all, I want to talk about uh, one of my friends that unfortunately is a serial killer. And uh, some of you might know him. Uh, his name is COVID-19. Uh, we already talked a lot about COVID-19 and how bad it was. And like, it's been, we, and so many people are dead and like so many bad things. But there are some positive things even in COVID-19. One of the positive things is uh, COVID-19 was a trauma, but it was like a global trauma. Like everybody in the world was experiencing the same thing at the same time. When people talk to each other, when some countries they are involved in war or in poverty or those other kind of things, when people have a chat to each other, when I was never been in war, I try to understand, but I can never understand that, what have what they've been gone through, or how they're feeling. But the good thing about COVID-19 is it doesn't matter you are in Australia, you are in the United States, you are in the Middle East, wherever, you've been feeling it, you've been struggling with it. It was a bad thing, but the positive side that we've been all through it, like as a like a as a big team, like a all human everywhere in the world, and that was the positive thing about that. And, uh, but loneliness uh, was uh, the thing that was like, we feel lots of, we feel much more alone in the COVID-19. We are all born alone and we die alone. And in between, we just make some friends that they will uh, help us not to feel alone, not to feel that loneliness. Like, uh, all of my friends are a serial killer, some of them are artists. And a uh, friend for me is like Ramin. The first time he came to my shop as a customer, about two, three years ago, uh, he ordered a kebab, I served him, and then, just he was the customer and I was the shop owner, that's it. And then we talked about the theater and art and everything, and then, like, he introduced me to a theater group and <coughs> helped me to uh, like think about my art and like believing believing in myself and now I'm here. He introduced me to this team and Mamad that he helped me a lot to believe in myself. The first day I came here I said that I have a, I'm passionate about theater and art but I don't know that if I am talented. Like he said that we will help you and he helped me to believe in myself and encourage me. Friend for me is Merfam that he uh, he taught me that he can turn his trauma and his bad feeling into art to make a book to make a novel out of 
her, his bad feeling and his bad experiences. Or Reza that taught me a lot about the theater and the experience and the feeling. Or friend can be Aryan, my friend that we live here. He is a film expert. He is actually the film expert in our podcast. And I, uh, tonight I invited my family to come here for support. They said that, yeah, go, 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 we support you from home. But he is here. <laughs> he is here for support and that means a lot of it. And, he, and, he, and yeah, that was, might be a good opportunity to promote our podcast a bit. We make a podcast. <laughs> Uh, it's a film review and critics. He does. He is more expert in movies and stuff. He does the critics and things. And Rami is the director of that podcast. Our podcast is in Persian, but we might do some English episodes in the future. Twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, listen, thank you to all of you. This has been, by turns, very humbling and also very, very inspiring. Um, you, you've taken us to a lot of different places across um, your offerings, what you've shared with us tonight, and um, you also took us back <laughs> to the darkness of a place that we all remember and relate to in very particular and different ways and while I was listening to you I was thinking back to my experience of COVID which is that I was watching two what, what I saw as being two different kinds of people's responses. One was the response that was in effect creatively paralysed and that was the, the response I had, actually, and quite a lot of people I knew. So when I hear all of these stories about this passionate insistence to write and write through the trauma and the loneliness of that, spirit, that experience, I'm truly humbled and I, I find it incredible that, that you did that. Um, because the other experience I was aware of was people who would say, oh, I had a great time during lockdowns, I wrote two books. Mm. You know, the, the, the individual who was able to just comfortably retreat into their shell and be this sort of super productive, self-contained unit of some kind. And I, I was horrified by that, actually, because that struck me as the response that was retreating from the world. Um, I, I was much happier to be creatively paralysed while having this weird sort of dispersed empathy for, you know, all sorts of situations I knew nothing about in the world, but that at least felt like the right kind of response. But what you've all given us tonight is a third way, which I find incredible, which is that both individually and together, you were able to insist on taking the trauma of that experience and digging more deeply yet still back into underlying deeper levels that were hit by that experience to draw it forth and to produce something beautiful out of it. And those beautiful things were in your own writings, they were in the collaborative project that you've done, but also these, you know, friendships that, that you've produced along the way. And along in all of the narrative you've shared with us, you've, all, you've, you've, you've exposed so much of um, what is out there more generally that people have to navigate in order to, to, to do what you've done. So um, thank you so much. But I'm going to very quickly segue to say that tonight was never about a performance. It's supposed to be about a genuine conversation by those of us who are in the room, so that the kind of the layout of the room is not really very conducive for this. Um, but 
really, I think all the guys on the stage would love to hear from, from you. We'd, we'd love to um, get some more dynamic back and forth. Right? Because next time you come, that will be the, the one directional theatre that tonight is for something different. It's for trying to reach across those those experiences that, that we've all had and um, perhaps leave tonight knowing each other just a little bit more. So um, I, I, I welcome anybody um, sharing their responses or opening up a line of discussion at this point. Please don't be shy and feel free to, to come forward too. I'm happy to say something. I'll sit like this. Kim. Kim. Kim from up here. Oh, all right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, I guess I'm just reflecting on the fact that we're, we're all still wondering, I guess, what the experience of the lockdowns uh, will be for everyone uniquely and then, I guess, collectively as well. Um, I guess my experience, I was not here for all of the lockdowns, but my community was here and I was elsewhere. So there was a certain kind of aspect of isolation with that. But, um, sorry, because I'm, I'm quite moved, you'll hear it in my voice, by, by sharing what you've shared. Uh, I guess I just wanted to ask you about um, the last notes, you were saying as you were writing notes, uh, it was November, and then you got together in April. And so just simply hearing that, dates, um, for me is really helpful because I don't know if anyone else has experience, you have to fill out a lot of forms. I was at uni, um, I started an undergrad in 2019, and that's about all I can tell you when someone says, oh, well, when did you do that year? The date is gone. Um, and so simply just hearing you say dates and the fact that you've had a project go across this time. Um, I just wanted to say how profoundly healing that is to have just someone actually be able to recall what you did when um, and, and to think that you've managed to sort of keep in touch and, and create a project across this time uh, is tremendous. So I just wanted to sort of share that. That's wonderful. Thank you. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Because you mentioned the, date. the significance of the date. Uh, yes, the last note that I, the last update that I had is November 2020, and the first one that we met physically was April 2021. So. Nothing changed during this time for me personally. So the Lord was that I read at the beginning. So nothing was changing. The only thing was the maybe just a little bit of hope and glimpse of a theater world is coming. And if you have worked in theater, you don't maybe the feeling that you feel on the stage you can't put it anywhere else. That was the only thing that thinking and going through my text as a monologue at that time uh, was just giving me a little bit of hope. That was the only difference between during that time. Um, but definitely technology helped a lot. Uh, Zoom meetings, rehearsals, Mamad is getting professional in computer and all you can
put a concept into your head, and I'm going to get back to you again and again. It's interesting that the date Reza just showed us. I remember Carlos. Oh, Carlos must have been waiting for that image because I didn't take photos. In one of those sessions, we got to the front room, and I got the uh, whiteboard, and I wrote 10 different Persian words. And I said, they are not words. They are concepts. <laughs> and then we started talking gradually. And he just showed me. And I had the same feeling, but I didn't share with him. The date is so significant. And within that context, talking to him, and from time to time, I, I, I ask them, please send me, well, I'm embarrassed because I even ask many days last time, could you send me a Zoom as if I'm somebody? Could you please send me a Zoom invitation? I said, ask people. I asked them, the dean of you, the dean of, I asked my colleague, could you send me a, I, I don't know, I've used it. And anyhow, uh, and from time, from time to time, through the conversations, this guy just see Leila in name there, and sort of lazy, but they all engage. And I can see that alienation in that room suddenly dissipates. And this is I really felt technology could help in such a critical time. So I think this kind of things are really important. If you look at them, if you are a researcher and you pick up anything, you could write whatever you like, but they, but they were committed. They recognized in what stage they were, and that been fantastic experience. You want to say something? Yeah, of course. Or maybe, oh, somebody, else <laughs> ask, maybe somebody else wants to ask him. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, friends. So, I thought I'd ask a question. Maybe two questions. Um, so, first, we have all, all these generous people, these generous friends that have come here to, to hear you, uh, to share with us, to hear you talk about the performance that will happen. But I, I thought perhaps, you know, maybe we could have a, a little teaser of some kind, you know, maybe, um, maybe I could ask you to share some moment or some, just a few seconds from, from the performance, you know, in order to serve as an invitation, um, you know, so that our friends can see what it, what, what's in store in a few weeks. And you know, that's, you, you, you can knock that back if you, if you feel that's, um, that's not right. Um, but, the, um, but I wanted to come back to the text. I, I really like all this focus on, on, on the text, and you know, how the text was constructed, how, how, you, how you worked on it. And you know, my very simple question is, did you, did you agree on the selections? And were there disagreements around this? And, and you know, when 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 Mahmoud was um, privileging something, or when Mahmoud was saying, "What about this?" Did you did you fight over did you fight over this? Yeah. Um, Good question. You know, I'm, I'm so I'm interested in how that process of um, around the monologues and the texts um, happened. Um, and then the other thing was this: you know, what, what you shared with us, um, Metfam, I thought was very very strong. Thank you. And I was um. I was thinking that most of us who, you know, who write and reflect, we have a kind of a, a twofold relationship with the text. We write something and then it goes out to the world, and then that's kind of it. Maybe it returns in some way. But here, there's there's a threefold relationship. You're, you're writing a text, and it's going out. You're sharing it with others, but then you're also performing it, and and you 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 you, you kind of emphasize that emphasize that point. This 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 um this moment when you wrote something and you shared it with Mama and then and then you realized that Mama was you know, was they going to ask you to perform it, you know, and sort of thinking of yourself, thinking whether this was something that you could do, you know, could could that I perform this, you know, could I perform this? And I was really struck by that. I thought it was really interesting. Um but thank you. I'll, 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 I'll leave it <laughs> So perhaps the teaser, if, um, if you if you, we have to talk to you yeah. Maybe maybe we two could share. I think uh, um, um, Carlos made a good question in relation to uh, because once the text finished, I was absolutely anxious. Uh, there, there's, I mean, they could share. But I'll put the context and then you can share. 
Uh, I remember we, if you remember, we actually put uh, your writings around here, just here, almost 10 pages old, old. And I said, please, look. And then, do you remember? Yeah. Right. Choose which segment you want me to put into the play. And each of them went through. And I insisted again, do you really feel like this? And so within that context, I opened up. But they could talk, these two, uh, because they were here, they could talk about the experience. Selections of pieces was, <laughs> for me that was, I'm a boom man. If there was a talk of poets, I think we had the last poet maybe two, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Then we had a, <laughs> then we had a, a section at the end of the play. There was a, yes. a very yeah. serious conversation that we had. And that was not once. Uh, if I want to call it a voice, kind of, Mama definitely is the final writer of the play. No, the uh, Carlos talks about the selection of music. Yes, yes. But definitely it was collaborated for. So we selected maybe not all of them is in the final world. And maybe there are sections that Mamet selected because of the situation that he was creating at the end. Um, but short answer to the files, yes, we will follow it. We are still following. Still following, yes. Still following. In the writing section. But when it's coming to the, if you put the Mamet director's hat on and we're coming to the results and play, um, still, if you feel on, on the stage and during the rehearsal, if you feel that you need to say some extra word, you change it a little bit, we just give it a try. And after conversation, oh, this is my feeling, I need to do this. Because I was thinking that I need maybe this sentence to be here. And it still is happening. So it's that progressive elaboration, if you want to call it. So it's still going on and going on. And maybe every week we're adding, we're cutting. It's still that is happening. But for the text itself, we thought of it. Yeah, the, the discussion of um, challenging, I mean, the last scene that I had to add, I had to add. <laughs> um, I had to really um, be very, very um, gentle because I knew they were going to come at me and they did. But I managed to convince them that, okay, it's about connection. And then through all this process, you connected. So that's just very significant. Talking about how organic, how, how dynamic, how collaborative, how democratic the process has been. But as from that, the Sunday, the text is not going to change. Because it's translated into English, so it would be unfair <laughs> to the English. But amongst ourselves, we could develop different feelings, different things. There's still uh, a few emotional uh, exploration of how the body could respond on the stage. Uh, yeah. But yeah, challenges, it's always welcome. Yeah. Oh, Scott, do you want to say something? Um, in terms of the play, um, is there hope? Yep. Um, it's not... Um, it, it, of course, um, uh, it's all. It's nurturing it. It's uh, it's their voice, even though I put everything in it in terms of give it leg to walk. Even the text that I have added, I negotiate with them. So there is hope, but also two things that come out for me in this play. And I think we have to pay attention in our multicultural society is that. And I'm going to pause because I'm very bothered by certain modes of reflecting on uh, the other here. 
This is the play that the other attacks the other within itself. For example, the piece that Reza is acting and reflecting is really shows how within a culture people can be nasty, insensitive, unfair, backstabbers. It's not just about the dominant culture, and then by doing that, then we could deal with the dominant culture when it dismisses us, isolate us, isolate us better. So this is a very interesting clash, dramatically speaking, and physically they demonstrate it. And so within that, it tries to demystify this, this issue of we come here, hence here is bad. That's what I'm saying. You come here with your body, and there is a lot trapped in your body. Don't tell me about your memories. What's happened to this body? And within that context, we open it up to amazing performances of self-reflection. It's very self-reflective and honest, extremely honest, in a sense, how we deal with it and how we deal with the dominant. And the dynamic that these guys produce is, to me, one of the best experiences I, I really have had, both in my research and my engagement with the drama, with the play, with, with the theatre. And this guy's been very brave because it, they are Iranians. <laughs> they deal with themselves. And they hope, I hope many Iranians come and see it. And I think one of the reasons that we are so depressed and so lonely and so, um, so alienated is because we don't deal with that. And they got, this guy showed me why. Very powerfully, please, Iranians, get our lovely Iranians to come and see. It's a great miracle. And then they are performing it beautifully, and the, the farce is perfect. So I think we are. <laughs> I just wanted to say yeah. something about the whole thing. It is, it is, it is very hopeful. Yeah. Uh, so, about the journey we had with the, the spirit, the first time I've seen it, it was uh, like I was very worried and nervous about that. But when I gone through it, I thought, wow, that's the story of my life. <laughs> like, how Muhammad knows about that? Like, and then I said that we've been all gone through the same kind of experience in different aspects. But and the fight we had about that was about, as Reza was saying, about the ending of that thing. Like I was saying, because the, the original one, the finishing scene, was very epic. <laughs> no, no, I don't give it to them. No, I just want to say how it looked like and now. Cut okay. his microphone. <laughs> I, I mean, in, we all have seen Titanic probably at the end, Jack dies, right? <laughs> or we see Godfather at the end, Godfather dies. So, but then, Mama said something important. I said that uh, we have responsibility for people who come to watch. Uh, at the end of the show, people, uh, like it's really important that how you finish it, like how people, <coughs> what are they feeling when they leave, when they leave the uh, theater. Mm -hmm. And that's why we gone through that, but yeah, now it is a bit different. Yeah, we come to agree, we, we come to agree <coughs> that um, it shows that, I mean, I compare, Debating with them, that's hope, again in the hope. Debating with them in that pen was, guys, what I noticed, you did not trust each other when we came here. You were so anxious, you were so nervous, you didn't want to have anything to do. Iranians are like that, at least they are into the tabilei, into the tribal space. Iranians are very tribal, and they stick to it. And that never opens up the environment. So they came out of that anxiety, fear, um, teasing each other in a, in a very negative way, and then suddenly they start flourishing. I said, I have observed a very strong connection between you guys. Trust, the way that you tease each other, the way that you laugh, the way that you eat the bloody buffalo was that you bring all the time and I have stuff to with it. It's fantastic, the way that they pu you push me into uh, having this amazing Iranian food that I never had for decades now. All those kind of things, I see it. So this connection needs to be addressed. Uh, it's a reward to yourself. And that's, that's hope. And that's become a reward to them. But 
We are still, as we just said, sort of mm -hmm, what to do with it. So that's condition is there. And it shows how enriching this experience has been. Can you hear me? Yes. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> that's for the recording. That's it. That's okay. it. Next. <laughs> I want to ask a question uh, about my language. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a friend who is 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 a ندارم هیچ یا نوشته ای یا اطلاعی چیزی که من بتونم در اختیار دیگران قرار بدم و بهشون بگم که یه همچین برنامه هست. I translated. Could you translate first? Yeah. So she's asking for if Mama is asking for the Iranian community to come and see the show and play. What is the best way just to distribute it or just socialize it? Does it? So I think after this panel, Carl is going to put the tickets and things on the website and then we'll share it again, for sure. Yeah. So also maybe I'll talk to uh, Carl <coughs> to do a, a Persian text. A little bit info yeah. information in Persian. Oh, that'd be great. Persian, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could pass it on. Good. But she said, I, I'm very willing, to, I'm very willing to, to follow this suggestion, but what and how can I do it? So I think that, that's the answer. But من من سعی می کنم یک قطعه از اون اطلاعاتی که وجود داره را ترجمه بکنم و یا در اختیار شما بذارم یا اینکه اینا بزنم روی اون اطلاعاتشون و شما میتونم از این طریق منتقل کنید به دیگران ولی بهترین طریق همون خبر رسانیه ماره The best way is just to contact friends because you got a lot of friends and I'm sure that's a good question. That's a good one. Yep. Well, my name is Farsi. My name is Farsi. I'm cold in English, but actually, but it happens when, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I can go for it. Yeah, give it a shot. Anyway, um. اولا خواسته بگم که خیلی باحال بود و خیلی نمیدونم آفرین واقعا چون آره هیجان دارم که مامانم بیارم و تماشاش کنه و یه چیزی درست کردم برای مثلا ایرانی ها و نمیدونم وقتی حرف میزنی و تماشاتون میکنم که it's like Seeing my brothers and my uncles and my dad on stage and it's very familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll say a bit in English too. Yeah, like it's like you know, looking at very familiar feelings and experiences. It's really awesome that you guys have been able to do this. But Hassan Saal Kanan, Chijuri, Esasitun Chijuri, Masan Bed Farsi, but. But like an audience of English speakers, Kablan and John Kardia in Abalin Baratuna. I just asked them, you know, have you in the past performed to an English audience? Is this your first time? And how do you think it will feel? How do you think um, that experience will be? Good question. All the questions will be great. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. This is our Kuchulu. Kuchulu is the little one. We all the tallest one. The little one. The beautiful one. Our first one. Our first one. تجربه این تجربه خب اولش که خب من همونجور که تو مرز هم گفته بودم خیلی اون تجربه بودم نگران بودم از اینکه بخوام یه همچین اجربه داشته باشم اینا ولی بعدش ته روند که روند که با هم دیجا رفتیم خب خیلی چیزا رو یاد گرفتم توی خیلی چیزایی که 
بوده توی من همیختر شدم و با همه استرساب دامان مسئلی که بود فکر میکنم این که بسیار خوب بود این که؟ در واقع این ناتشل He said, of course, I was very anxious, as I said in my presentation, uh, to be performing, but gradually I got into depth of my own feelings and, and I feel more comfortable. And so uh, there's no issue to perform it. But he didn't say it because it's the first time that he performs on the stage, let alone in front of mixed people. So it's quite <coughs> interesting. Yeah. Just adding something, um, I've done one play in Farsi before, it was in Lomo, and one boiling wall with self-titled as well. Um, I think if the theater is physical enough, I think I'll talk about it someday with Melinda as well. If <coughs> it should be very bad that you leave the room and you're not getting anything out of the play. That was exactly what I told Melinda. We should be very bad. I don't think you are that. <laughs> <laughs> like <It's> serious. <laughs> yeah, we make the body work. Uh, this, this is the, 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 the theater that I love anyway. But the, the body really works, and these guys done their best to come along with me. But they work so hard to go deep into the emotions. Yeah. Deep in their emotions, because as I kept saying to them, emotions are revealing you, your life. If you have such a wonderful place called the stage to release it, it's unbelievable. So they, 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 uh, uh, Reza is right. If you go out after the performance, you don't need to know English, but you got a text anyway. Um, you get something, and I'm saying it with confidence because the, the response in this level, the response that we, in comments and observation that we receive from Melinda, who saw it on Sunday, for me is enough for us to be, we are convinced that you guys are going to get a lot out of it. And of course you got the text to go away and read it with your own thing. But these bodies are the text. And that text says a lot. <laughs> it says a lot. <laughs> uh, could be minimal, but it says a lot. Because this body is really talk. So, in that context. Yeah. Just to add in what Mama said, I think the idea behind that the play is in Farsi is that uh, no matter what, from what background the audience will be, they're coming to see the loneliness of some people which is happening in their own language mm -hmm. and if someone not understanding them that is the reality and that is the fact mm -hmm. and there are things happening that people are not understanding mm -hmm. uh, i think that is exactly the fine line in theater that you're coming to get entertained or to get uncomfortable i think this is the same thing and another thing to challenge um, I'm going to stop here to challenge, and I reflected last week uh, with, with Melinda and a few times with, uh, when we were developed, when I was developing the text with uh, Carlos. I think if you really research in an academic and vigorous way this concept called the other, performance like this could even challenge that theoretical approach cognitive approach to the other. Because if you come with, with preconceived ideas that I have to understand, and you come, and I love people to come with that view, I didn't understand, but something hit me. I think that's where the other is hiding. Not when I speak English, you understand me. But if I just decide just to speak Persian, you run away. In the structure of power, in the institutions, hmm? in academic discourse, in the presentation of a seminar, who would spend half an hour to listen to 
Dr. Aidani speaking in Persian about Jacques Derrida, or Antonin Artaud, or uh, Heidegger. Not many. So, <laughs> but I could I present that as effective as but drama. You come in punctures that barrier, and the body again helps. Because it is where the alienation is. The profundity of the Allah who comes to this culture, especially these people from the Middle East, it doesn't matter how much I speak English perfectly, touch on that alienation, it just like a bloody snack pops out. And this play could challenge those who come with that view. I understand the other, of course. Good will is there. So I'm saying this. If we start having theatre like that, we could actually pay more attention to those wonderful uh, theories about the other. So there, there, there's a lot of things that each individual could, could take, particularly the dominant person coming with absolute goodwill and feel. I mean, I cannot not repeat again. What I observed Melinda, as authentic as she is showing us, to me was absolute significant. Because that's where the real authenticity of the other who has looked at the other comes through to me. I felt it. I was mesmerized. I didn't know what's happening. This is where you come very close to the other. Emotional connection, affective connection. And that's I think this guy's gonna do too, hopefully. If they don't dampen it. Because you never know what's happening. <laughs> so how much again. Yeah. And just uh, there is one more thing. I was really worried about that uh, doing the theater in Persian, I'm not worried that if people cannot uh, feel connected. But Reza said something uh, interesting. We have a Persian proverb that I would like to say in Persian. We say, uh, which means that all the time, the majority will doing something, and now this single time is the time for minority. Like, when I was a little kid, I was just watching the English-speaking movies because they are good. And I even had no idea of English, even the, some part of the English I speak, I learned from those movies. Like, as a minority uh, community, always been that experiencing that, that we're watching art in English all the time. We watch all those movies in English, even when we had no idea. And now, this time, it's the time that <laughs> having the other way around. <laughs> Woo! Okay, I have something to say. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I was going to talk about theater. I just want to say thank you to uh, Professor because. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, because. Um, my feeling is that theater brings me back to life. I was away from theater for about 10 years. I've been on some stages here as a pantomime or something like this, but not proper uh, acting as before. Very well. And I'm thinking the theater brings me back to life. About the question about the hope, I'm thinking the understanding is hope. I'm giving this example. The fish in the sea, sorry, the fish in the sea never can explain what is the sea because it's in it. But the people on the beach can explain, oh, there's a sea, there's a lot of water, it's bluish, there's a boat, there's an island, there's a people, there's a fish in it. So in theater, we have to come out of the sea as a fish and see what's going on and understand and go back to the sea to be able to act. I'm thinking, uh, as soon as we understand what's going on, there is a small, tiny window that we can find a hope in it. And we go just to that point. Uh, I was thinking to just share this uh, feeling and, you know. So it's just for the hope. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I think at this point, I want to thank you all. Uh, you've, you've, you've given us all a lot tonight. Um, it's, a, it's been a marvellous gift, this panel, and it hasn't just been a gift for this audience, for this gathering of people. I don't want to call us an audience. We're a 
gathering to gather right. with you. But it's also been a, a tremendous gift for the Institute of Postcolonial Studies. So when I say you've just completed the first project of coexistence, which we proudly launch, that concept of coexistence is the main one that drives everything that we do. And when we use that concept, we're thinking in a really hard way about how we make communities in this place right now and how we do that very, very genuinely. How we speak across our differences and how we honour those differences and recognise that we're never all going to be the same and we don't want to all be the same and how boring it would be if we were all the same and how humbling and important that process of us, the white dominators, let me just use that kind of crass language, how humbling that experience is when we are othered, when we come into your theatre space and all of a sudden we have the rug pulled under, out from under our feet because our presumption that anywhere we go we're going to hear and know the language mm. is not there. So we have to attend to what you're doing with so much more um, focus and care and investment. And that's something that I like to think about as describing an element of what we want to do more generally here at the Institute. So I'm, I'm so terribly grateful to you all. It's been a really fantastic, a really inspiring evening. Thank you. It, it, it feels like its own special thing to the side of the the theatre actually, um, but I really, I do hope that everyone's here tonight will not only come back, but spread the word among your friends. Um, we have four performances coming up and we would love to have lots and lots of people wanting to come. Um, so thanks for coming and we might break now and invite everybody to come and have a drink and a, a, a more um, informal chat. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Melinda. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.